Psalm 66 Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of His name. Make His praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come, see what God has done. His awesome deeds for humankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. Verse 19. God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Good morning to you and welcome to the service of worship with the Vintuk Central Methodist Church. We join in prayer. O oh, gracious God, we bow our hearts to you today as we pray and we give you thanks for what you've done. Lord, at a time like this, we could keep our minds going around and around the issues we're worried about and the issues we're complaining about. But we stop deliberately from doing all of that and we go to our memory of you and of your goodness. And we give you thanks, Lord, even in this difficult time for what you have done. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge as you have promised over the centuries. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness in our lives. We thank you that no matter what the circumstances, we can count on you. We pray, Lord, that you help us to recognize your hand in our lives because it is you who gives us strength. It is you who helps us to face the day. Oh Lord, we are so grateful that you never hold yes the day against us. You never say, oh no, t tomorrow I'll bless you again. Every day, Lord, every day you give us what we need for that day. And you give us a chance to bless somebody else. Almighty God, we must confess to you our sins and our shortcomings. Those that we can bring to mind and those we don't even realize. Those we committed by accident and those that were deliberate. O oh Lord, we admit to you and to ourselves, we're not perfect. We fall short every day. Forgive us, Lord. And give us, we pray, a real and true desire to let go of the old and to grab hold of all that we can be through the power of your Spirit. Thank you, Lord, in your mercy, in Jesus' name. Amen. We do it together.
sadly this week and next week still we'll definitely not be able to gather physically in church we'll have to see what happens thereafter and wait and pray but as you sit and watch this video can i ask you to just close your eyes for a moment and picture the people who normally sit near you in church whether you know their names or not and just picture them and and pray for them also in the bulletin for today there are prayer requests we are reminded that it is our duty as christian people to pray not only for ourselves but for the world around us and so there are some prayer requests there that might guide you in in your times of prayer for our community but also for the world at large also have a look please at the bulletin in terms of the election process of society stewards which is uh, ongoing at the moment and see how it is that you can participate we are doing that electronically at the moment so have a look at the guidance as to where we're at and participate please if you are a full member of the methodist church of southern africa in the vintage central society we want to say happy birthday to those who had birthdays this past week may you feel the love that surrounds you from the people who love you and may you know that you are precious and um, unique and you are a child of god honored and loved by god now let us go to our bible readings for today the first is from the book of samuel it's a very very long chapter so let me just summarize for you but please go and read first samuel chapter 17 for yourself so david is not among the soldiers he's way too young so his father sends him with some bread and cheese to his brothers three of the three of the older brothers are soldiers in the in the in the army and so david gets there and everybody is sitting so forlorn there's this giant who's been shouting at them for 40 days come any one of you israelites who wants to fight me the one who who wins between you and me will be the winner of the war and these israelites look at this giant um, and they think none of us are going to do this what are we going to do we can't be stuck out here forever we can't turn around and run they'll be after us we can't face them they're too big for us what do we do and they're stuck so David asks a few questions and eventually he says, well, I think, I think I can tackle this business. And they take him to the king because the king hears what, what David is saying. The king says, well, if you really think so, I'll give you my old, own armor. And then David tries to put on the king's armor and he can hardly lift his legs. And eventually he says, no, king, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't do this. I just need to do this the way that, 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 that I can. Um, and so he goes off in absolute faith and he picks up five small stones to use his sling that he normally uses to ward off lions and bears when he looks after the sheep and he faces Goliath who shouts abusively at him but he goes at it and with the first sling of that little stone it knocks Goliath right in his forehead knocks him down and he dies but go and read it there's more to the story than that in the detail which is told very very beautifully for us in first samuel but also do we go to the new testament and mark's gospel chapter four we um still in chapter four of mark and we start at verse 35 that day when evening came jesus said to his disciples Let's go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with them. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up rebuked the wind and waves and said to be quiet be still then the wind died down and it was completely calm then he said to his disciples why are you so afraid do you still have no faith they were terrified and asked each other 
Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Thanks be to God for this passage that comes to us from Scripture. <clears throat> they were stuck, weren't they? All the soldiers that they could muster were there. The king himself was there on the battlefield to oversee everything, but they were in a corner. Twice a day for 40 days already, the giant from the enemy camp had come out and shouted at them, Send me one of your guys, anyone, and we'll fight. And the winner's army will be declared the winner of the war. No one would do it. Not one of the soldiers could get the courage together to go and face the giant. Don't tell me you don't know what it feels like. A complicated situation at home, power plays at work, a health situation you have no control over. In these days we are stuck in this pandemic that is coming to us in waves and we don't know how many waves there will be and we don't know how long it is before the wave will be at its peak. The disciples of Jesus had a similar experience. Jesus had said to them, after he had told the people on the shore some parables sitting in the boat, he said to them, let's, let's go across to the other side of the lake. So they did. And in the middle of the sea, Jesus falls asleep, having been teaching all day, comfortably, lying on a pillow. And the so storm comes up. He is fast asleep. The disciples get panicky and they are absolutely stuck in a swirling sea, panicking, and Jesus didn't seem to care. Where is God when we get stuck anyway? What do you start thinking about God when you get stuck? The Christian author Debbie Thomas says something that made me think. She says, when we are really scared, one of the things that happens to us is we get suspicious. You remember being scared of the dark as a child? Remember what it was like? Your mind would send you to all kinds of suspicions that there are fearsome creatures under the bed or in the dark or that the dog has changed into a werewolf. Suspicions might just persist into adulthood. When things are really tough at work and you are stuck and you are scared of what's going on, you suddenly begin to think that your boss has it in for you. When you face the coronavirus pandemic, the suspicion becomes so far-fetched that we begin to imagine the vaccine taking on a life of its own and that it will come one by one to kill us off or it will take control of our minds. In our fear, we even become suspicious of God. The disciples say, Jesus, were you just going to let us die? With suspicious minds, they conjure up a God who doesn't care. A God who withdraws from us. In the dark of the night, you somehow convince yourself that everything and anything is against you. That you're alone. And there's no way through. That's how the disciples felt in their desperation. They went to wake Jesus up, accusing him of not caring that they die. The Israelite soldiers, on the other hand, had no clue at all. They just froze in their fear. They just sat and listened to Goliath shouting at them morning and evening, day after day for 40 days. Verse 11 of 1 Samuel 17 says, on hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. The New Living Translation says, They were terrified and deeply shaken. The Message Translation says, When Saul and his troops heard the Philistines' challenge, they were terrified and lost all hope. Facing our Goliaths. It makes sense. Maybe to go and sit next to David for a little while. And hear what it was that lifted him to the place where he 
could face the source of everybody's fear. David wasn't one of the soldiers in the camp of Saul. His older brothers were there, three of them. David was only the messenger from home, delivering some food from their dad to the brothers. He had no business talking about military matters. He was getting involved in things too complicated for him. His brothers were actually really irritated with him. Verse 28, when Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? Can you just hear the brother's anger at this little guy meddling with the war, meddling with stuff of big people? But the king got wind of David's interest and he called for David. And David says to the king, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. <laughs> A little teenager, what does he think? One could accuse him of youthful arrogance. But when you read the story, it's more than that. There were two things that spurred David on to volunteer, to refuse to wear the king's armor, to face the giant that everybody was scared of. The most important thing was this. David was completely convinced of the presence and the power of Almighty God. There was not a doubt in his mind that the Philistine army was no match for Almighty God. Goliath might be two meters tall, broad with bulging muscles and the most intimidating gear, but it was not Goliath that was in David's mind's eye. It was the God of heaven and earth that was in his mind. It was God, the God who makes the mountains rumble and who uses the clouds as his chariot. As David says in Psalms, Psalm 66, shout to the for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. I wonder whether he wrote that sometime after his event with Goliath. Behind David's actions is an unshakable belief in the goodness and power of Almighty God. He's learnt it all his life. He's been singing it on his harp. He's been depending on God's goodness and power whenever he's confronted a bear or a lion while he was looking after his sheep. This is the foundation of an unwavering faith in times of trouble. So many of us are going through grief and illness right now. And we are scared. And this pandemic is unknown to us and the future is uncertain. But David could face the giant because he remembered the power and the goodness of God in his life. So we can stand in these extremely trying times, not because we're brave, not because we are indestructible, but because we know that we remember that God has carried us before. We know the one who holds the universe in his hand. He knows our name and he faces our Goliaths with us. I can say it this way. Every prayer that you've prayed, every hymn that you've sung, every Bible verse that has ever given you comfort, they gather around you and they give you spiritual memory. They talk about muscle memory, you know. That your body learns to remember how to act in certain situations and you don't have to concentrate on them. When a movement is repeated over and over, a long-term muscle memory is created for that task, allowing you to perform it with little or no conscious effort. When a prayer, a hymn, a verse is repeated over and over a long time, a spiritual memory is created in our souls, and when life gets really hard, that memory can kick in, and that memory of God's goodness will hold us up. I am sure we develop spiritual memory. The faith that you've been exercising over years and years and years 
come to the fore in the time of difficulty. You've been praying, singing, worshipping, reading all these years so that in a time like this your spiritual memory can kick in and you can be strong and you can be confident in God's power and work in your life. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. That's what David did. And that's what the disciples in the boat didn't do. I. It was Jesus' complaint about them all the time. They couldn't remember from day to day what he had done yesterday and that they could depend on him tomorrow. They floundered over and over again because they couldn't remember what Jesus had done yesterday. And again, now in the boat, they start panicking, forgetting who he is and what he can do. The other part of David's victory plan was that he needed what he knew best. Faith and action. That is what he is about in his story, isn't it? He trusted completely in God. And now he was going to make sure that he did his best at doing what needed to be done. And he picked up those little stones. Faith and action. That's what the heroes of faith teach us. And so he took five small stones, not being overconfident, he might need more than one, and with nothing but his slingshot, he stepped into action. And he did what needed doing. I said earlier that fear sometimes makes us suspicious. The other thing that fear does very often is it incapacitates us. You freeze. Your brain freezes. You assume the problem is too big for you. And then you don't even try. Think of those disciples in the boat with Jesus, frozen into panic. What's that about? Quite a few of them were actually fishermen. They knew boats. They knew the sea. They knew the storms. And suddenly now in their panic, they're stuck. Take the situation at the moment. Why is it so hard for us to pick up those five little stones and deal with the pandemic? You know, David's five little stones. Just with those five little stones in our hands, we can make a huge difference in this pandemic. Keep your distance. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Stay at home when you're sick. Go, get vaccinated. Faith and action. For David, they go together. When you find yourself in a very difficult place, when fear wants to overwhelm you, bring to mind the goodness and the power of God and then face the giant. You may be surprised at how many resources you actually have inside of your heart and mind. They may seem small and insignificant to you. But those things that are within you already, that you have learned over the years to use, will stand you in good stead. The ability to speak with kindness. The readiness to tell the truth. The willingness to confront injustice. The wisdom to stop talking and listen. The grace to speak hope into another person's life. The courage to do the right thing. If you've got them, you have. Let us not, as individuals and as society, stand in fear and be stuck because the giants just seem so big. Just one small stone slayed Goliath. With faith, with courage, what can we do? Amen. Friends, today is across the world Refugee Sunday. And so in your prayers, can I ask you to keep in mind especially the refugees around the world. Remember everything that they've had to leave behind to go and find safety and the possibility of a life. Remember those who went through great danger 
to get to where they are now. Remember those who struggle to feel welcome where they find themselves now. Pray for those refugees who find themselves in this country and especially our sisters and brothers in Osiri. May they find that for them too, God truly is their strength and refuge. And so our last hymn is both praise and prayer, recognizing that God is our strength and our refuge. As we close our service, may God go with you in this week to come. May you know the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And may you go and be a blessing to every other person that you encounter.